all the scriptures that claim love is God, no? That love that you feel inside is God. But what is this love? Why is this love referred as God? Because love is not something that diminish. Nowadays you see people, you know, today they love somebody, tomorrow they don't even know the person. Personal benefit. Once my benefit is fulfilled, what I have attained, what I want, the love is not there anymore. And that's what people claim they love. Love can't diminish. Love can't finish. Love is something that keeps growing. It is something which is, there's nothing beyond it. And it is eternal. That's why you have a feeling, you see, when you meet somebody, you know that person. No? If that feeling must come from somewhere, no? you have never met somebody in your life, and yet, when you meet somebody, you have your heart is pulsating, and I have a feeling for that person. You don't know the person, the person don't know you, you have never met the person, but yet, that feeling is there. That means that love that you have never die. But to attain that love, you know, for you not to be superficial, to benefit truly from uh, your spiritual practices, there's only one thing that needs to be done. That is the mind. The mind must transform. If that mind is not transforming, you will still swim in the same kind of love which you think is love. You will still try to attain a God which is bind by limitation. You will never attain the Supreme Lord Himself. <coughs> So that mind, that what Bhagavan Krishna said now, that mind is the cause of happiness and suffering. And the Bhagavatam, he said, surrender that mind to me. I shall transform it. He said, surrender that mind to me. He didn't say to surrender your body. He didn't say to surrender your senses. He said, surrender that mind to me. He clearly said, no, we will get that chapter three, uh, chapter three, verse 29. He said it. If that mind is surrendered, everything changes. If that mind attained his feet, it is only with that mind that you can serve Him. It is only with that mind that you can love Him. Depend which emotion you are put into it. It is only through that mind that you experience this world as love and hate. The mind which is uh, <coughs> transformed through, through favorable emotions, it is turned to love. The mind which is, trans is touched with unfavorable emotions, it becomes hate. Simple, there's only one mind. There's no two minds. But that mind depends on each one of you. How you want it. Where do you focus it? You focus it into something which is limited, you can't expect something unlimited. No? You can't tell that you focus it on Maya, you expect to find the eternal one. Not possible. Of course, you see, to tame that mind, to control that mind is not an easy thing. Because the beauty of the outside, you know, 
the magnificence of Maya, you know, the, the greatness of the natural <laughs> world, is very tempting. <coughs> and for some time you want it, true, and you want that happiness, but yet you don't achieve it. Because you see, you're looking for that divine happiness into the material world. It's not possible. You will never find it, because your true happiness, that happiness is divine. That happiness which you have, that you are looking for truly to be happy, it is a spiritual happiness. And for that, you need something which is spiritual. And what is spiritual in, in you, which is eternal in you, it is your soul. But you can't command your soul now. <laughs> you can't say, soul, go beyond God now. But so the soul is part of God. But you don't have any power over that. The soul is divine. The mind is subtle. Then you have the body which is material. That the body which is doing all his activities, and which is bound by the five senses. But yet, everybody wants to do, to let, to make, you see, you have the mind which has to be focused on God, but nowadays, you know, you try to start to feel with the mind. Earlier we were talking about somebody who was asking, Swamiji, I don't feel anything. But of course you can't feel anything. You're thinking how you have to feel. <laughs> how does this go together? It doesn't go together. You can't think and call it feeling. <coughs> so this is what people do nowadays. They try to feel, but that feeling must be how they want to be. And I love somebody, but the person must be that way, that way, that way. Forgetting that love break all the barrier of indifference. The other word of love is respect. Now, when you love somebody, you respect the person the way the person is.